This is a TCEA remote learning video. This is part four of remote learning with Google Classroom. We're going to be looking at how students interact with assignments and you grade them. My name is Jennifer Berglund. I'm the Director of Government Relations for TCEA. You can reach me at jberglund at tca.org or you can follow me at jberglund. A couple of things I want to highlight before we get into the demo. First of all, one of the things that you really need to get in your head is what a student does to turn to let them to let you know that they have completed the assignment. Many of the things that they will um, give to you are physical assignments that they will be turning in using Google Classroom. So it's a digital physical. They're physically turning it in by sending it through Google Classroom to you. So you will get something that you will actually be looking at that, that, that they completed. Marking it as done is a way of letting um, you know that they've completed something that maybe they're not going to be turning in directly to you. And I'll show you that in just a minute. OK, the other thing that people really want to know is can Google Classroom grades go automatically into the district's grade book? The answer to that question used to be no, but recently Google has worked very hard to make this happen because they knew it was um, really teachers want number one request. You need to check with your IT department because um, just to make sure that the gradebook system that they use does sync with Google Classroom. If it does, then they will do all the magic in the background. All right, so let's go directly into Google Classroom and we are going to be in the section called Classwork most of the time. And I'm going to try to show you um, how um, students interact with different assignments. And just so to let you know from the very beginning, however, we I will be demonstrating rubrics, but I won't be showing you how to create one. That will be in um, video number six. I will be showing you how they interact with the quiz, but I won't be showing you how to create one and how to connect it um, and how you can use all the power of the Google form in Google Classroom. That will be in um, number five. OK, uh, OK. We're going to start by looking at a document that you have associated with an assignment that you want your students to individually work on. And I am going to use my fictitious student, Thomas Payne, and I am going to go into the assignment that I am referring to. It is on the causes of the Texas Revolution. Now, I this student has actually, you'll notice it's grayed out. He has actually already turned it in. So when he opens it up, notice over here, he says that he's turned it in. So he's completed the assignment, but he's not gotten the grade. So I am now going to go into my um, teacher account. I am going to come to that assignment. I'm going to click on View Assignment. Notice that Every student has turned the, the assignment in. Two of them I've graded, two of them I have not. So let's look to see what Thomas Paine turned in. So I click on that document and I see that he has completed it. And it looks like he, um, he, he, looks like he did a pretty good job and I actually added a little comment here wow you put a lot of effort into this activity so I'm going to give him um, I noticed the last box didn't complete so I'm going to give him a 95 and I'm just going to say um, good job because I want you to notice that um, I can add private comments so that he receives them and Now it's time for me to return. See, it says not returned. When I click on return, now Thomas Payne will have edit rights to the document. And I do not. OK, so let's go back now to see what happened. Now notice that the grade says um, 95. So Sassy Senior is the only one that I haven't graded yet. So I'll deal with hers later. All right, so let's now go back to 
uh, my classwork and we're now going to look at a document where several people will write on the same document. It is an electoral college activity. I'm going to go in here and view assignment because I want to see who has not done it. It looks like Daisy May is the only one that's not turned it in. So I'm going to go in um, as Daisy May and do this assignment. It is in, a, one thing I want you to note, items that are in gray are completed. The one that is in orange are not completed. So that's easy for them to, to a visual reminder of what, what needs to be done. So note, this is an assignment that I've shared with all of my students. They all have the same document. They're going to be working on the same document. She doesn't have a document up here that says your work because everyone is going to be working and collaborating on the same document. This is a really good activity if you want to kind of generate um, some classroom discussion, but you want to do it in writing. And so basically what the assignment is, is I wanted them to read about the Electoral College and then write comments um, throughout um, the assignment. So if I um, wanted to come in and write something as Daisy May, I would just say, wow, look at this. Not very enlightening, enlightening, but I don't want to take up too much time to do that. So once I've written in my comments and done my editing or whatever the assignment was, now I come over here and I click on mark as done. Notice I'm not turning anything in because the teacher already has access to this document. So I click on mark as done. Note, note that it now says your work has been turned in. And so now as the teacher I am going to go and see Daisy Mays has been turned in. I will think about what she's done. Didn't put too much effort into it, so I'm going to give her an 80. Okay. If I wanted to give her a comment um, next time, um, I have more input. And she will get some um, input from me. So it's a way for me to be able to, to send her um, some comments on something that um, she did not necessarily physically turn in. Now note that I now have the ability to return it here. So I am going to click on return. I could write a private comment there if I want to. Okay, the next assignment we want to look at is a quiz. And remember, we're not going to show, I'm not going to show you how to actually create one and connect it and all that, um, because we're going to do that in a separate video. So right now, I want to want you to just see what it looks like from the, the um, student's perspective. So come here from classwork. I'm going to come down to test quiz. I'm going to view the assignment and here um, the student um, sees that there's a quiz for me to take. I'm going to click on it. This is pretty simple, literally, um, just mainly to show you how a student interacts with this. If I wanted to send the responses to me in an email, I could do that, but I don't need to because here is where I can get my score. I made a hundred. Isn't that amazing? So I can now go back here and go back to the assignment and notice that it marked it as done for me. And so now you can see I don't have to click on anything. It's been submitted. It says that it's turned in. So now I'm going to go into the account as a teacher. I want to go look at that assignment. I'm going to click on view assignment. I immediately see that one person has completed it but no one else has. Now note that the grade is not listed there. The way you import the grade is you click on import grades. Now because the other students haven't done any of their turned it in yet, there I'm still going to go ahead and import. Typically you would wait until all the students are finished with the, the grades. Notice that it came in as 100 um, and so that student's grade has automatically 
been taken from the form and put into the, the student's grade book. When these um, students finish it, I can click on import grades again, but it will give me a warning that it's going to um, write over all of the grades. So you just need to note that. I don't think it matters because Thomas's grade is not going to change and it would still come in as a hundred because I tested that. All right, so that's pretty simple. Again, remember I will talk about how to create a quiz and connect it and all of that in video number five. All right, we next want to, and the list is the last one we're gonna look at, and that is a question. And the question is down here, how is the Articles of Confederation different than the Constitution? And we're going to go into Spunky Third Grader to let him answer that question for us. So when I open up the assignment, it asks me to watch a video and then to answer the question, how is the um, Articles of Confederation different? Now notice I could write in a comment here, but that's not, that is as if I'm writing on the assignment. Like I don't understand this. What does AC stand for? You know, that kind of thing. This is where I write in the answer. So remember, it's just a question, and now I'm going to write in a short answer. So um, one of the things that I might say is that um, there is no president in the articles. AC. Okay. So now once I have um, completed that, I click on turn in. I am turning something in to the teacher. Now let's go back. Let's go back and look at that assignment now from the student's perspective. She's still not seeing any of the other students work. That's what I wanted to, to show you. All right, so now let's go back as the teacher. And let's open up that question. And this is what you see as the question, as the, the teacher. You see their work, they're answering the question, and I can go in and um, type in um, that student's response. And now it is because I've already turned these in or returned them. Let's just make sure. Let's go ahead and click return and hit. It's going to say, do you want to return all of those? And I'm going to say yes. All right, that covers the basics of cre um, how students interact with the different assignments and then how you grade them.